here we have a second order ODE that we're going to solve using Laplace transforms. I have over to the right here, I have the transforms that I'll use. I have the transform for my second derivative and my first der derivative. And then notice we have e to the t times cosine of t. So we're going to need the Laplace for cosine of t and then for the uh, first shifting theorem, uh, Laplace of e to the at f of t. I'm going to zoom in, but those are the formulas that we'll use. Uh, so I'm going to start by taking the Laplace transform of each term. And again, these are from the formulas from the second derivative. We get s squared y minus s times y of 0 minus y prime of 0 and then minus the Laplace transform of y prime is s times y minus y of 0. And then I have the Laplace of e to the t cosine of t. That's going to be the same as the Laplace of the cosine of t where I'm shifting my s from s to s minus 1. That's from that 1t. Uh, uh, so from here, I know that y of 0 is 0. So this term drops out. This term drops out. y prime of 0 is 1. And I'm going to rewrite the left side, and I'll factor out the, the common y. That's going to leave me with s squared minus s times y. I still have this minus 1 equals, and then on the right side, the Laplace of the cosine of t is s over s squared plus 1. And from there, we're going to do our shift. Uh, and at the same time, I'll factor on the left side factor out an s, we get s times s minus 1 times y, and I wait to bring that 1 over. And then doing my shift on the right side, I get s minus 1 over s minus 1 squared plus 1. Uh, so I think I'll simplify that denominator, uh, s squared or s minus 1 squared is s squared minus 2s plus 1. And so when I simplify the denominator, I'll just rewrite this again. And I'm going to bring that 1 over this time. Equals s minus 1 over s squared minus 2s plus 2, because we have these two 1s that combine. Uh, and then I brought that 1 over, so I'm going to add 1. But I'm going to write that 1 as s squared minus 2s plus 2 over itself. That way I can combine those two fractions into a single fraction. And now on the right side, I'm going to have s squared minus 2s plus 2 for my denominator. And my numerator in descending order is going to be s squared. And then I have s minus 2s. That gives me negative s. And then I have 1 or negative 1 plus 2. That's going to give me a plus 1. And that's equal to s times s minus 1 times y. And I can solve for y by dividing by s s minus 1. That's the same as multiplying by 1 over s, s minus 1. And there's my y. y equals s squared minus s plus 1, which does not factor, over s squared minus 2s plus 2, which also does not factor times s, times s minus 1. Okay, that's my y. 
Uh, let's see how much space. Okay, I'll just keep going here. And now we will want to apply the inverse Laplace transform. But in order to take the inverse Laplace transform of this huge fraction, we would want to uh, do partial fraction decomposition. I'm going to do that off to the side here. Partial fraction decomposition. I'm going to take s squared minus s plus 1 over my uh, denominator. And that's going to be equal to as plus b over s squared minus 2s plus 2. Remember that, that that denominator does not factor. And uh, because you have a quadratic denominator, a degree 2, you have to have a, a linear numerator, a degree 1. And then I'll have c over s and d over s minus 1. I'm going to multiply everything by the common denominator. I'll just put it this way, times the least common denominator. And on the left side, it's going to give me s squared minus s plus 1. On the right side, I'm going to get as plus b multiplied by s, s minus 1. And then I'm going to have uh, c. Uh, I'm not going to have enough space there. I'll bring this down to the next row, plus c times s squared minus 2s plus 2 times s minus 1, and then plus d times s squared minus 2s plus 2 times s. So what you have on that right side is a little bit messy. I don't know if I would multiply it out. We might try that shorthand method for finding uh, the values for a, b, c, and d. Uh, with the shorthand method, we would uh, let s equal some value, choose a value that will cancel out factors, and substitute it in and see what we get. So if s is 0, then any term that contains a factor of s will drop out. So if s is 0, my my uh, my my uh, term a that contains a and b and d will drop out. It'll leave me with only a c term. Uh, if s is zero, the left side of the equation becomes zero minus zero plus one. So I get one equals, and then I only have the c term. So I'm going to have c times, and if s is zero, those s terms drop out. I get 2 times negative 1, or 1 equals negative 2c, and we end up with c is equal to negative 1 half. Okay, so then we're going to let s equal 1, because letting s equal 1 will cancel out the c term, it'll cancel out that a and b term, uh, and it'll leave me with this d term. So when s is 1, the left side of the equation becomes 1 minus 1 plus 1. That's going to be just 1. And on the right side, we'll just have this d term. We'll have d times, uh, this becomes 1 minus 2 plus 2, or just 1s, or 1 times, and s is 1. So we get d equals 1. Uh, and then we need to choose another value. I'm going to choose s equals negative 1 because negative 1 is an e easy number to work with. Uh, and nothing will cancel out. But we know the values for c and d, so we only need to solve for a and b. Uh, so when s is negative 1, this becomes 1 plus 1 plus 1, or 3, equals s is negative 1. So I'm going to get 
negative a plus b times negative 1 times negative 2, and then plus c, but c is negative 1 half, times, let's see, if s is negative 1, then this is going to become 1 plus 2 plus 2 becomes 5. And negative 1 minus 1 is negative 2. And then I have d, which is 1 times 5 times negative 1. So let's see what we get. I'm going to just rewrite this uh, whole thing. This is multiplying by 2. So I'm going to get negative 2a plus 2b. Uh, here I can cancel the 2s. And I'll get two negatives gives me a positive 5. And then that last term is going to be minus 5. So those terms cancel. And I get negative 2a plus 2b equals 3. And now if I just choose one more value for s... I guess let's choose 2. And if s is 2, on the left side here, we're going to have 4 take away 2 plus 1. That's 3 equals. Uh, this first term is going to be uh, 2a plus b times 2 times 1. And then plus c, c is negative 1 half. And then let's see, 2 squared is 4, minus 2 times 2 is minus 4 plus 2. So this, uh, this uh, quadratic factor would just become 2. And then 2 minus 1 is 1. And then d is 1. And we said that quadratic factor was going to be a 2, and then s is 2. So the second equation becomes 3 equals, here I'm going to distribute through by 2 to get 4a plus 2b. Uh, here the 2s will cancel, and I get minus 1 plus 4, and hey. negative 1 plus 4 is 3, and, and look, if you subtract 3 from both sides, that'll give you 0 equals 4a plus 2b. So this equation, together with this equation, gives us a system that we can solve for a and b. If I just multiply through that, that uh, first equation, or, or the second, it doesn't matter, by a negative, then when I add these equations together, the b terms will cancel, and it gives me 4a plus 2a is 6a equals negative 3. So a is negative 1 half. And then what does b have to be? Let's see. If I bring this, if I bring that a over, that gives me 2b equals negative 4a, or b equals negative 2a. If a is negative 1 half, then b is going to be 1. And so we get, I'm just going to, I'm not going to apply the inverse Laplace transform yet, but I'm going to rewrite this just like I have up here. A, S. A is negative 1 half times S plus B is 1 over S squared minus 2S plus 2 and then plus C is negative 1 half. I'm going to put that in front times 1 over S and then plus D is 1 times 1 over s minus 1. And from here, we'll apply the inverse Laplace transform. So for the inverse Laplace transform, 
the 1 over s and the 1 over s minus 1 are, are easy. I'll need to rewrite that, uh, this first term on the right side. I'll take that denominator and rewrite it in this form that came from s minus 1 squared plus 1. And then I'm going to take the two terms in the numerator and break this up. So I have negative 1 half s over that, and then I have plus 1 over s minus 1 squared plus 1. And then I have minus 1 half times 1 over s, and then plus, I don't need that 1 there, plus 1 over s minus 1. So now applying the inverse Laplace, we'll do that here. We're going to get y of t, oh, not quite ready for it yet. Uh, I see that I have a shift here from s to s minus 1, but I need to have that shift up here. So I'm going to put it in there. But if I subtract 1, then I also have to add 1, and that negative 1 was multiplied by negative 1 half. So this is going to have to be multiplied by negative 1 half to give me, uh, what is that, 1 minus 1 half. It's going to give me a 1 half for this numerator. So now I can apply my transforms. This is going to be e to the t, that's my shift times the inverse Laplace transform of, and you know what, I'm going to take that negative one-half in front, uh, and that'll leave me with s over s squared plus 1. That second term is going to be plus one-half e to the t times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 1. Let's draw a line there. And then I have minus 1 half times the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s, which is 1. And then plus the inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s minus 1 is e to the t. So almost done. This should be my final step. I have negative 1 half e to the t times the inverse Laplace transform of s over s squared plus 1 is cosine of t, and then plus 1 half e to the t. The inverse Laplace transform of 1 over s squared plus 1 is sine of t, and then I have minus 1 half plus e to the t. And that should be our answer to the initial value problem.